Holyrood House and the Wittenberg Castle and an especially warm welcome back to those of you joining us here in church today on this Palm Sunday. There's a line in the Old Testament reading for today which says, Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. I wonder if that's what we've been these last few months, prisoners of hope. But if that is the case, then it is the case too that we have returned today to our stronghold, to our sanctuary. And from the sanctuary we extend also a warm welcome to those who are joining us online, on the computer, or indeed on the telephone, as we come together in our separate places to worship God this Palm Sunday. One or two intimations just to draw to your attention. They're printed on the back of the weekly sheet, and the weekly sheet is available also on the home page of our website. A reminder particularly um, that this year there will be no live services for Monday, Thursday and Good Friday um, that we're sticking at the moment with Sundays only, um, but that there'll be a short service for Monday, Thursday and Good Friday uploaded to the website on the appropriate day later this week and that we will return to our stronghold next Sunday again for Easter Day in the usual manner. Also a reminder that the April edition of our newsletter, our monthly newsletter, is now available online in the absence of paper copies. After this service is over, those of you who are here are encouraged to take the leaflet and the palm cross that you should have found with your leaflet away with you um, and leave by the side aisles and the side doors making your way into the courtyard and keeping a safe distance from those around you as you go. But for the moment, we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Jesus said, now is the hour of judgment for this world. Now shall the prince of this world be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw everyone unto myself. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, much less the temples which our hands have built. Yet you are always near those who are humble and contrite. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your servants, we pray, that cleansed and illumined by your grace, we may worthily show forth your praise and obtain a gracious answer to our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we say together the prayer of confession, printed in gold in the leaflet, we take, as always at this point in our service, a moment of quiet, a moment to reflect on the week that has passed and on the new week that has now begun. A moment to ask God's forgiveness, to seek his guidance, to rest in the assurance of his presence, his purpose, his peace. We confess to God Almighty, to all the company of heaven and to each other, that we have sinned exceedingly in thought, word and deed, by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault. Therefore we beseech Almighty God to give us the grace of true repentance, to have mercy upon us and cleanse us from our sins. Lord have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. The almighty and merciful Lord grants unto you, being penitent, pardon, absolution, and remission of all your sins. Amen. And the collect for this Palm Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, on the first Palm Sunday, you entered the rebellious city where you were to die. Enter our hearts, we pray, and subdue them to yourself. And as your disciples blessed your coming and spread garments and branches in your way, make us ready to lay at your feet all that we have and are, that we too may bless your coming. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is our shared reading, the antiphonal psalm, which is printed in the leaflet part of the psalm set for Palm Sunday, Psalm 118, the first couple of verses and then a few from later in the psalm, if the congregation would respond aloud with those verses that are printed in bold. We will give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his steadfast Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. Who give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And then, remaining with the Old Testament and the book of the prophet Zechariah, from chapter 9 and beginning at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. And then turning to the Gospel according to St. Mark at chapter 11, and beginning at verse 1, the account of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the coat? 
They told them what Jesus had said. And they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. May God bless to us these readings from his holy word, and to his name be glory and praise. Let us quietly affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we find them printed here in the weekly sheet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Perhaps with an extra element of thanksgiving in our hearts, we continue with a prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all, all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A text today from the psalm that we shared just a few minutes ago, Psalm 118 at verse 26. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Words from the psalm traditionally set for Palm Sunday and already spoken aloud by the congregation this morning with the added poignancy of the following verse. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. In fact, it's a verse that was typically used as a greeting at the temple in Jerusalem whenever pilgrims arrived for any of the major festivals. Wherever they had come from and whatever the hopes and expectations they had brought with them. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. St. Mark tells us that it was exactly the same quote from exactly the same psalm that greeted the arrival of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. 
But never did a pilgrim arrive for a festival with more hopes and expectations heaped upon his shoulders. And here too the following verse, quoted and shouted by the crowd, makes that abundantly clear. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. They and he would be only too aware of the prophecy of Zechariah, written centuries before, heralding the arrival of a triumphant and victorious king, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The question of whether I would ever get round to reading Hilary Mantel's 900-page historical blockbuster, The Mirror and the Light, has become, to my mind at least, a saga almost as long-running as the book itself. But I have finally started it. And already, even in the first hundred or so pages, the accounts of the court of King Henry VIII reflect a degree of extravagance and ostentation beyond all imagining. Mantel vividly paints pictures and describes textures, crimson satins and purple velvets and gold ornamentation that draped not only the ample frame of the king and his courtiers, but their horses too. Magnificent mesmerizing beasts they must have seemed to those awaiting their arrival at the gates of the Tower of London or Hampton Court. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In marked Contrast to the spontaneous stushi he would cause by overthrowing the tables of the money changers in the temple the very next day. At this point, Jesus seems careful and even calculated in his effort to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah. The selection of two disciples to go ahead the prearranged plan for them to find a coat that has never been ridden in order to fulfill its sacred purpose. Even the password to secure its release, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. It's all very deliberate, all very designed to strike a chord with the crowd watching and waiting to bless more than any other, this particular one who comes in the name of the Lord. They were in no doubt that this was the one they had long been waiting for, the one who would bring in the kingdom of their ancestor and his ancestor, David. But that kingdom would be like no other. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Already on the outskirts of Jerusalem, the war horse, the battle-scarred equestrian veteran of many a conflict, is transformed into a colt, unbroken and inexperienced and nervous of what lies ahead. But humble and riding on a donkey, Jesus is none of those things. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. All this is contained in his simple gesture. And as the river flows to the ends of the earth, from this simple gesture would flow the energy and the impetus to build a kingdom like no other, set on a foundation of humility, of service, of sacrifice, of peace from sea to shining sea. 
That enormous lockdown book I'm reading begins with the execution of Anne Boleyn. I have no idea how it will end. Neither did those who welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem with their palm branches and their cloaks spread out on the road. But within days they would be calling for his execution. Sometimes they strew his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day hosannas to their king. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. Today, as we find ourselves turning once again the pages of what has been called the greatest story the world has ever known, May we be ready not only to welcome him, but in our worship and in our witness, remain true. So that whether here in church or there at home, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Amen. of frailty, 
and frustration. With the darkness of depression, addiction, abuse. And we pray for all who seek to bring light to those in darkness and hope to those in despair. We continue to pray for those who work in hospitals and care homes and for all who contribute quietly and kindly to the common good. We pray for the Queen and all the royal family and household, for the forces of the Crown and those who serve in Parliament, and for the Church in all its branches and denominations this most sacred of weeks. Bless our palm crosses, we pray, that we who bear them in Christ's name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. And hear us now as in the house of the Lord or at home, we say together the family prayer of the church in every age and place. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve and to follow the Lord this holy week. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you, with all those whom you love and serve and pray for this day, in all the days to come, and even forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.